Is there a better way to finance the things we need and want in life? We take our money and we put it into our own banking system first. What better position could you put yourself in and your family and your children in? And, and all that interest that usually goes to a bank, what if we just pay ourselves back all that interest? So we've now put our money into, you know, two places, you know, working, if you will. Welcome to uh, Wealth Webinar Wednesday. Today's July 10th. I'm Stephen Nagy. I'm uh, hosting the show today on behalf of Chris Noggle, who's traveling down to Miami today. And I have uh, one of our money mentors and educators and producers and creators, uh, Mr. Craig Yenny with me out of Colorado. So Craig and I are going to be getting into uh, a little more detail and uh, some of the intricacies around the infinite banking concept. So two weeks ago, I was on the show and we started getting into why infinite banking, why it's so important to control your wealth, why we use this specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy from a mutually owned insurance company, the type of company we use, the type of policies we use, why we uh, spend so much time researching and working with different companies and really digging in to figure out to bring you the best way to create this banking system. Because at the end of the day, we're creating a banking system so we can eliminate things like bleeding just interest, just the, the velocity of money, the velocity of interest that we bleed out throughout our entire lives is staggering when you look at it. It allows us to keep our money in a safe place where it's protected from this, this so happy society that we live in, from lawsuits and judgments and bankruptcies and all the bad things that can happen. It provides generational wealth and a legacy uh, for, for our future, for our family, for people that we love in this, in this world. It provides us a way to have our money continuously uh, compounding and growing guaranteed year after year after year after year after year while simultaneously being able to take advantage and use that money for other things. And that's actually what we're going to get into today. And our, what are some of those topics? I ran out of time a couple of weeks ago. Um, and so last week, if you guys were with us last week, uh, we did a whole, we did a whole wealth webinar on Chris buying a new Porsche, which was pretty cool. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but we actually were on bringatrailer.com and we were live bidding on a Porsche, an auction that was ending right as the show was going on. And I was like, Chris, we should just like share the screen and live bid on this thing. And like, then we'll show people how you're buying it. Because if you're just watching that opening video, it's an ad on how to buy cars using this concept. So we actually did that live last week. So Chris bought a $130,000 Porsche, his dream car, the car he's always wanted, beautiful car, and he used his banking system. So then we showed you how he's using his banking system to pay himself back with interest instead of somebody else's bank and how by paying himself back with interest along with the compounding of the money within the policy how over the next several years he's gonna be able to recoup most of the money from that purchase where basically he's able to buy his dream car in 2024 and basically have it paid for uh, by using this concept the right way so keep in mind what we talked about the product that I just mentioned the whole life insurance policy. There's a whole lot that goes into that. Go back a couple of weeks and watch the uh, watch the Wealth Webinar for two weeks ago. And I really got into some of that. So today we're gonna talk not much about the product, but today we're gonna get more into the concept itself and what that looks like. Because at the end of the day, that's the powerful part. You know, we can use 10 different insurance companies out there. We can use 10 different types of whole life products. Now. You should never use an IUL. Let me just make that very, very clear. There's lots of whole life products out there that, yeah, maybe it'll work for your situation. Uh, we believe it. We can we can work with an IUL. No, and we got some new stuff coming out uh, in uh, soon on IULs that's going to blow your mind. Uh, you guys have heard us talk about IULs for several years. We've done a lot of research. We've had debates on them. We've brought you the facts. I think by now everybody knows. IULs are no good, especially when it comes to the infinite banking concept. However, we've recently learned some stuff about IULs that we didn't even know about. How when they have, um, you know, they have a, a cap on their earnings, but these insurance companies can actually reduce what you think you're able to earn. It's in the contract of every IUL and all these little intricacies of them that we just learned about. So we'll be coming out with some new stuff on that. But bottom line is, 
If you are thinking of uh, buying an IUL for any reason, I think it's at least worth the conversation to have with our team, one of our money mentors. Watch a couple of videos I can share with you if you want to send me an email, uh, but educate yourself and then make an educated decision. At the end of the day, if you find out it's still right for you, great. I'll disagree with you, but that's your decision. At least you're going into it educated and that's all anybody can really ask. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'll get into some of this, Craig, but I just wanted to introduce you real fast. Um, so if you could just real quick, you know, kind of what you work on all day and kind of stuff that you've done so far and, and just quick intro. You guys know, Craig, you've seen him on here, but if anybody's new on here, just want to do a quick intro. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for the intro. And as Stephen mentioned, part of the team and you kind of do some of the money mentoring, but really my focus, I'd say the last several months has been building tools. So as we back up a little bit, we we talk about infinite banking a lot and we talk about the solutions a lot. But I think today, one of the things I want to touch on, Stephen, is really highlighting some of the problems that we're solving. And, you know, a lot of people will look at, well, you know, I've got major purchases to finance. I've got cars, I've got college, you know, and, and, and so there's some of those things that will help. A lot of folks out there may have debt. You know, we may have credit card debts, car loans, personal loans. And so the the question is how do we how do we really get a hold of those things and really use our money in a more efficient way with infinite banking? So backing up into kind of what I've been working on is is building some of the tools to help our community see how their specific situation is going to work with infinite banking. So whether you're buying a major purchase, whether you're paying down debts, whether you're investing. So that's where a lot of my time is being spent. Um, I'm also working on some different case studies. And I think the first place we're going to roll this out. So Stephen, our advanced training, that's in what, later August that's coming up. Correct. I'm really excited about uh, a case study I've been working on for the past couple of months. You, you've probably all heard about the buy term, invest the difference. Well, I'm putting it on trial and I'm really going to get into the the details of what does that really look like from a short-term, long-term perspective? And then how can you, you know, what are some of the challenges of relying on that strategy for a retirement perspective? So those are some of the things I've been working on. I know I've been kind of out of the wealth webinars for the past, you know, several weeks, but that's kind of hiding in the background working on that stuff. So yeah, man, other than that, that's my story. Yeah, it's so cool because... You know what 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 Craig is is been able to do is is like I mentioned before we have the product we have the concept and then there's the implementation of it. You know you you have to have the proper vehicle and I'll I'll get into that right now just a little bit so we can make sure everybody's on the same page before we dive into the concept. But you know we have to have that right vehicle and again that vehicle is a specially designed and engineered whole life policy from a mutually owned and uh, dividend paying insurance company that's been around forever that's always paid consistent dividends uh, that has the highest ratings. Why do we want all that? Because we want our money to be protected and safe and we want to make sure it's stored somewhere. Our warehouse of wealth where we store our money is in the right place. And so very, very important. Again, being able to create the right type of policy, be able to put the right, because when, when I say specially designed and engineered, literally, Craig, I mean, every single policy that we build for somebody is different. Every single one of them is different. Not It's just like, a, it's like a They're custom like suit. It's like that fancy suit you bought that was custom made, right? Yeah. And so every suit is tailor made, it's custom made. So before we jump into it too much, I'd, I'd also like just to query the audience do we have anybody here that's here for the first time, or maybe this is your second wealth webinar? I'm just kind of curious what we have in the audience. If you wouldn't mind just putting in the chat, make sure you select to everyone. If you're new, just put in I. I'd love to see how many folks we have here for the first time. Yeah, definitely. Always, always, always good to see who's uh who's yep. on. Brenda's new. All right, welcome, Brenda. No, Drew, no. Drew, Drew, no, 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 not you. Okay, cool. So we do have some new people on, so that's great. So yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. So make sure everyone's on the same page and um, I'll, I'll supply some different resources over in the chat box. So after this, you can really get into it a little bit deeper and uh, and continue to learn. I mean, that's what these webinars are all about, why we do them every single week. So we have that product yeah. and then we have the concept, which um, which I'll, I'll kind of hit on a little bit right now, but the infinite banking concept and, and what that means. So if you're not a first timer on here, let's say you've been around the campfire for a while, or maybe you have a policy or two, you've been doing banking now for the last year or two or more. What is, I would just like to see in the chat box, what is 
the infinite banking concept mean to you? You know what? Let's hear just in a, in, a, in a sentence or two. You know, what is it meant for you? What does it do for you? Uh, what have you used it for? I'm just curious because we call it infinite banking concept. Again, I just, I keep stressing that because A, it's used in an infinite amount of ways, just like money's used. At the end of the day, what is money? What is money? Money is a means of exchange. I take mm -hmm. something, you know, whether it's a dollar bill, um, let me see, right? Whether we have, whether we have dollar bills, whether we have, I don't know. I mean, if I don't have dollar bills, what else could I trade? Can I trade in BYOB hats? I bet you I could. You know, if I said right now, hey, would anybody want to, uh, you know, somebody selling something, right? Say, how about I trade you this hat for that? I guarantee I could find somebody that would do that. So money at the end of the day is just a means of exchange. And there's an infinite way, uh, ways to use money. I mean, infinite ways. And so the infinite banking concept, so we have infinite ways to, to use this concept. It's banking because we're controlling the banking functions in our life. We're, we're becoming the bank, which I'm gonna hit on in just a second. And then it's the concept. And the concept is, is the most important part, but understanding the concept and then implementing the concept are completely two different things. Because we could, I could read, right now I'm going through the Infinite Banking Practitioners Program. Craig just finished it and became certified himself. So Craig went through all this and learned it all. <laughs> now, the reason I bring that up is because it's all about sound money, foundational money. It's all about banking and, and, and making sure that we understand the basics. So once we have that foundation, you can be the smartest person in the world. And I used to say this from stage. I used to speak on, speak at events every single week. I traveled around the country doing this. And I always say, you know, if, if books and tapes, if books, if books alone created success, you know, all librarians would be multimillionaires. Think about it. Librarians are surrounded by books and they know books more than better than anybody. But are librarians typically multimillionaires? No, because then once you understand and you learn and you educate, you got to go out there and you got to take action, you got to implement. And so what Craig has been able to do is we've been able to take these conceptualized ideas, this concept, and we've been able to mathematically prove it out through technology, through these advanced different types of spreadsheets and software that Craig has created. So it's it's really neat to be able to now talk about not only the banking part, the product, the concept and explain and teach it and show all these different cool ways to use it, like buying $130,000 Porsches, but now we can actually prove it out and show you for your specific situation. So I, I didn't have a chance to look over here. How are people saying they're using their policies? Did anybody respond on here, Craig? Yeah, so we've got Linus. I really like what Linus put in there was peace of mind, um, because we we teach all the time that we want to take back control. And so if you have control of your your banking functions, just like Linus says, you know, it's peace of mind. He's got paying off debts, using it for real estate. We've got some other folks talking, you know, Gold's talking about using it for lending. We've got it for real estate from Freddie. Yeah, so there, there's a wide variety of, of uses. And just like you said, the infinite banking, it's infinite. Um, I was just working with a guy yesterday. We're putting together a plan so he can pay for his daughter's college. Um, so it's there's lots of different uses out there. Yeah, very cool. Um, you know, I saw Freddie growth and used for real estate. Gold for me is a great place to store money and use for lending. Um with my policies, I can finally keep my money and use it too. Yeah, I, I love it. And, and yeah. so there's all these different ways to use it. And, and what I've found, you know, I've, I've over the last several years have worked with probably approaching 2000 clients now, maybe a little bit more just myself. And so, you know, you start to see trends, you start to see kind of commonalities and, you know, and we, we study economics, we study the economy, we study, you know, what's going on in the world and especially the country, United States. And, you know, I found that right now, a lot of people have a lot of debt, you know, so we get a lot of people that come to us and say, hey, you know, I have all this debt right now that I've, I've accrued, you know, we got to fix that because interest rates are super high. You know, people have access to money too. Like, you know, somebody might own a home and they have equity in their home. How do they start tapping into that? You know, can we use that to pay off debt? Well, can we use that to pay off the debt? But maybe we can still keep that money ahead of time. Or, you know, there's different ways to look at it. You know, I got this lump sum of money. You know, should I just pay off the debt or should I take that money, invest it, let's say, do a private money loan that pays me monthly interest and then use that interest to start paying the debt down instead of just using the cash to pay the debt off. So there's all these different scenarios and things that people, you know, find themselves in these different predicaments and, and, and situations. And just like every policy is different, 
every person's situation is different. And so what's really cool is our team that we've been able to comprise here uh, of our team of what we call our money mentors is our money mentors are now very well educated and trained on how to talk with you about your personal situation. So regardless of what your situation, whether you're somebody that does have de uh, debt right now, that's a lot of debt and you know you need to pay, whether you have a little bit of debt and you're like, well, just let me get this taken care of. Maybe you've, maybe you paid off your debt. And now you're at the stage where you're like, hey, I'm ready to start building wealth or, hey, I'm ready to start a business or, hey, I, I own a business. I'm paying all these taxes every year at the end of each year or whenever I'm paying my taxes. And 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 how do I start doing that in a more smart way? Uh, keep more of my money. So there's all these different situations. You could be like Chris, where you just want to buy more cars. You want to buy boats. You want to buy collectibles. Who knows, right? But whatever the case is, how do we do that in the smartest way possible? And at some of our trainings, I'm going to do this at the, probably do this at the event in Nashville. Um, so we're doing an event in Nashville. We also have a two-day virtual advanced infinite banking training coming up. It's uh, August. Oh, let me see. I'm just looking at my calendar. August 9th and 10th is going to be that virtual two-day. Um, and, and we'll probably teach that on there too. But what we do is we, we just look at money and we say, okay, here's what most people do. This is good. Here's what people that think they're doing things better than what most people do. Okay, that's better. We have good, better. And then when we have the truly financially educated, what we teach with infinite banking, controlling our wealth, self-directing our money, um, private investing as opposed to just you know, blindly throwing the stock market, all these different strategies. And that's what we really look at as the best. So we have good, better, and best. And there's nothing wrong with any of them. And there's something for everybody because what we teach, Craig, and, and you've seen this over the years, what we teach with the infinite banking concept, it's not hard. You're not working any harder to do this. You're not working any longer to be able to become more successful. You're not taking on any more risk to get this compounding returns that provide all this, this these benefits in the future. Um, you're not doing any of that. You're, you're not changing really anything except where your money goes first. So it's not hard to do, but not everybody does it. And not everybody has the capability to do it. And whatever the reason is, whether they just don't think they have the time to go learn something new, whether they just they're so ingrained in the traditional way of looking at things that they don't have the capacity mentally to make that mindset shift, um, or maybe they just don't care. I mean, how many people just go to a job, work, they believe that everything's going to work out, they go home at night and watch TV and, and spend the weekends and take the vacations and do everything else and use the credit cards the way everybody else does. You know, it's just the way the world works. And that's fine too. I got no problem because, I, you know, I also run all of our agents and I talk with all of our new agents and, and, and all that. And so I talk to a lot of agents and one of their biggest ideas when it comes to uh, teaching people on infant banking, I always ask new agents, I'm like, how are you going to go out there and acquire new clients? How are you going to get in front of people that want to learn about infinite banking? And their response is always the same. Well, I learned about this and I think it's the most powerful thing ever. And I'm going to go tell all my friends and family about it. And all my friends and family are going to start policies. And I'm like, Really? <laughs> and so from experience, let me tell you, that doesn't happen. What you think is the most powerful and right thing in the world, somebody else, for whatever reasons, might not also think that. And I've seen that happen time and time and time again. You ever seen that, Craig? Absolutely. I think our the people that are closest to us are the ones that we really, really want to get on board with this. And they're the ones that probably put up the most resistance. And it just boggles my mind, but that that's just a fact of life. Um, so, you know, our, our approach really here with with what we do is when people want to learn, we help teach. And when people want to implement, then we help them implement. So it's I, I would say, and Stephen, I think you're you're in line with this, too. We're not in the convincing business. Right. So if if you've done the work and you've learned and understand what the problem is, then you're going to want to do something different. And, and what I mean by what is the problem? I mean, it. at the end of the day, Nelson Ash always talked about when we, when we purchase things, we either finance them with someone else's money or we pay cash. And, and that's kind of the, the two things, the two ways people operate, right? I'm either going to go to the bank, get a loan to buy something, or I'm going to pay cash. And is there a better way than doing either of those. And, and that's really what we're teaching with infinite banking. Yep, absolutely. So let me just show a couple of real quick, just little concepts of, of what we're talking to. 
uh, before we get into some of the actual implementation of it all. So, okay, cool. So this is what, you know, I, I like to call um, banking principles, just kind of the foundation of how this works and what this machine of operating a bank really looks like. And, you know, if you've seen this presentation before, um, you know, we always use the example of, of when you go into a bank, how everybody is a vice president in the bank. You know, a lot of them are vice presidents. And the reason for that is the ironic part about all this, I guess, is that banks understand this concept using whole life insurance this way better than almost anybody else. But guess what banks don't tell us? Banks don't tell us to actually go do the same thing that they do. Banks tell us to use banks the way banks have always been used. Why? Because that's how banks make a lot of money. And we can all agree, banks make a lot of money, right? Some of the largest, most beautiful buildings in the world, skyscrapers, real estate, just driving down the road anywhere in this country. Every couple of miles, there's a branch office of a bank and usually they own all that real estate. Banks invest the majority, over 90% of their money in two different places. Number one in real estate and number two in whole life insurance policies. So if banks are investing in real estate and banks are buying whole life insurance policies, do you think maybe that's a smart thing we maybe want to start mimicking if we are making that conscious decision to become our own bank? Maybe, right? And you think maybe that's why when you ask me, you ask Chris, you ask people in the chat box that have been doing this for a while, hey, do you have one whole life policy or more? Well, we have multiple whole life policies, just like banks. Hey, do you invest in real estate? Do you buy real estate? Uh, do you do private uh, loans? Do you give mortgages? Do you do all this stuff? Uh, yeah, I do. Chris does. Craig does. Multiple people in the, in the chat box do. Uh, do banks do that also? Absolutely. So we're just mimicking at the end of the day what banks do. So let's understand banks. So I, I did I did this example last week. So I'm not going to hit it again right now, but um, or two weeks ago. But we, we talk a lot. You know, the, the question of can you make money earning four percent while paying six percent? And this is really kind of the the easiest way to look at this because this is gonna teach the simple concept of simple versus compounding interest, okay? So in one case, if we were to take a car loan at 6% for five years, $25,000 loan, at the end of that time frame, paying 6%, that $25,000 is gonna to grow to be just at under $29,000. And the reason for that is because as we make our car payment, it reduces the balance. And that 6% each year is charged on the balance of that loan. And this will come in more when we start, when Craig starts showing you exactly how these policies operate when we're taking loans to use them for things and then repaying ourselves back a loan. Just like in this example, we would pay back a bank loan for a, 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 if we were to go uh, get a loan to buy a car. Okay, and Chris talked all about this last week uh, when we showed buying the Porsche. And then over here, let's say we're earning 4%. So the same $25,000 over the same five-year time span at 4%, so two points lower, at the end of those five years, that, that $25,000 grows to be $30,525. So by paying 6% while only earning 4%, we actually would have made $1,500 uh, more in that scenario right there. So it's just one of those things where it's like, we got to start changing the way we look at money, okay? Um, the interest rate is not always the most important part. It's the type of interest. It's the way that that interest is is growing or 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 or, or diminishing. Um, and, and so, it's the so Stephen, process of money. Go ahead, Craig. Quick question for you. So if we're talking about where do we take a loan from to buy a car, for example? We would have an option to go to the bank and take a loan for that car and go buy our car and pay the bank payments. We also have the opportunity, if we've capitalized our system, to take that loan from our own banking system. So a lot of times when we're looking at these use cases, there's a lot of math involved to prove the numbers out. But I also want to ask this question of the audience is, if you have a bank loan, and you have a rough couple of months, maybe you lose a job or you have some unexpected expenses, which would you rather have? Would you rather have the commitment with paying the bank back or would you rather be paying your own system and maybe miss a payment and catch up three months later? So there's a lot of mathematical reasons why the whole infinite banking concept works, but there's also 
the control factor of if if you can't make that payment to the bank, are they going to come and get your car? Most likely. If you can't make a payment to your own system, are you going to repossess your own car? So when we talk about taking back control, that's a huge point where you're now in control of the flow of that money and when and how that loan gets paid back. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so important. If you've ever had a car repo before, it is not a good feeling and it can really get you depressed. You realize your whole world's coming down. Now maybe you can't get to your job. Like, you know, things happen in life, you know, whether it's something like COVID that's completely out of our, our control and the whole country shuts down and people lost their jobs and everything else, whether it's a crash, like in 2008, um, where just, you know, everything just, just fell out of the barrel and, or whether it's like a lot of people believe is coming in the next year or two with some type of recessionary, depressionary, stagflationary, you know, who knows what, what could happen? It's, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to get into all the all the numbers right now with the national debt and the credit card debt and, and the housing issues that we have in this country and everything else right now. But a lot of a lot of high level um, people are saying it's coming, you know, people like Warren Buffett are sitting in cash and and watching. And so, you know, we want to make sure that you know, in normal times, using this is so important. But Craig, you're, you're right, man. Like, when things happen in the world that are out of our control, having that control is is that much more important, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, and another another use case that I think we can leverage on that whole concept is if you're a real estate investor, let's say that you're using a line of credit or a bank to go out and, you know, put the down payment or maybe even, you know, money for a renovation on a property, well, they want that money to start flowing in next month. I mean, they want you to start making those payments where a lot of real estate investors we work with, they like the flexibility of taking a loan from their own system so they can do the renovation, they can get the property in shape and get it cash flowing and then start paying back their system. So I think that control piece, in addition to the math, is is really a huge point for especially a lot of the newer folks that are with us today is just think about the math, math. The mathematics of it, but also think about the control that it gives you as an investor or as a borrower. Yeah, and and I mean, speaking of, you know, borrowing money for for a rehab project. I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's where Private Money Club came from. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if if, you, if you're on Private Money Club, you guys know what I'm talking about. If not, go check it out, PrivateMoneyClub.com. And if we have some time at the end, I'll talk a little bit more about Private Money Club, but. You know, on the reverse side of what you were just talking about, Craig, I mean, you know, if you're an active investor, you know, you have the ability to now go to your banking system, your whole life policy, borrow that money to do, you know, the, the the rehab on that deal, to make a down payment on that property, whatever the case is, and then pay yourself back again, where you're in control. I mean, if you're an investor, you know the importance of, hey, if I could not make monthly payments back and just pay back the whole loan at the end of the project, it gives you that much more cash flow to be able to get done what you need to get done. And that can be huge for, and not just investors, but that can be huge for companies and corporations and especially yeah. small businesses. And so that's a beautiful thing. But on the reverse side of that is, you know, you have one of these policies, you, like you said, uh, Craig, you weren't scared to capitalize it. And now you got all this money in there. Well, maybe you don't want to actively spend the time to go out there and, 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 and actively do real estate, uh, but you want to be involved in it. And, and that's where the other side of private money club comes in that I was speaking about earlier with becoming a bank and providing mortgages to people. It's called private money lending. And private money lending is just providing money to uh, an investor, essentially, that instead of going to a bank to borrow the money to do the flip, they're coming to you to borrow the money to do the flip. You have a mortgage or a deed of trust in that property, just like a bank does. You have a promissory note laying out the terms, and you have the rights to take that house over, whether it's for for through foreclosure or, or, or whether it's through the contract that gives you the, the ownership of that property, if those terms are not abided by, but you're doing just like the bank does. So it provides this amazing place where regardless of your situation, um, you're able to take advantage of the stuff that Craig was talking about, which is just super, super cool in my opinion. Um, so let me get back over here. All right. So just a, a few more things just on, on how banking works, you know? So if we look at uh, and I'll talk, I'll, I'll show you exactly how this works in just a second with changing one thing. So again, when we, when we do infinite banking, 
And we start looking at, okay, let's put our money instead of somebody else's bank into our own banking system. Well, our own banking system, the vehicle for that is that specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy. Now, by doing this, again, we're not working any harder. We're not working any longer. We're not taking on any more risk. We're changing one thing, and that's where that money goes first. So let me just show you kind of in the real world what that looks like. So this is what most people do is, and how banks operate. So most people will take their money, and they'll go deposit it at a bank, okay? And let's just say that the bank is going to pay you 4% while your money's sitting in a savings account. All right. And then the way these banks operate is they don't actually take your hundred thousand dollars and keep it in a, in a, a lock box or a safe deposit box with your name on it and wait for you to come back and get it. No, 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 they don't do that. They immediately take that money and they immediately start doing what? They start moving that money. That's what banks do. They give loans. So they do things like they give out mortgages. They do things like they give out car notes. They give out home remodel loans. They can do debt consolidation loans. But at the end of the day, what does this bank really just do? Well, if they're paying you 4% in your savings account, and then they're lending money to somebody for a mortgage at 7%, what did that just create? Well, let's do the math. If they're making seven and they're paying you four, they just made a 3% spread, okay? For nothing, doing nothing more than providing that vehicle, the bank, for you to store your money and for somebody else to use that money. So basically what we're doing is we're just eliminating this middleman, but let me just show you. So if we do it with a car note, what do they do there? They created a 4% spread. Right here with the home remodel loan, a 5% spread. A debt consolidation loan, an 8% spread. So at the end of the day, what really just happened? If they took your money, they paid you 4% and then they just made three, four, five, eight. They just made 20% on your money. Is that right? Yeah. But if we really look at the math on this, what does it really mean? If they're paying you 4% and they're making 20%, that's five times more. So banks are actually making over 500% off of money that you're going sticking in that bank. And you guys can look this up just to give you a resource. It's called bauerfinancial.com. This is a research agency that just looks into banks and how they operate and um, it does a lot of research on them. So check out bauerfinancial.com. But they tell us banks make between 400 and 1300% off money that we leave there. So we're just eliminating that from our lives so we can keep that in our financial um, lives. So changing where the money goes first. Monthly personal savings as a share. And I think, Craig, this was yours. Did you send me this? Yeah, but yeah I sent that to you. And it, it's really just looking at the, you know, the savings rate. And, you know, we see during COVID, you know, what happened during COVID? You know, people were getting stimulus checks. People didn't have places to go spend money. So what were they doing? Well, they were saving it up. But it, it's really it's really looking pretty scary on on people's savings rates, you know, dipping down in the three percent ranges. And I think there's another uh, chart from Fred. I don't think we have it in this deck, but it, it shows the the debt, the consumer debt, which is well over a trillion, and it just keeps hockey sticking up. Yeah. And, and at the same time, the savings rate is just taking a nosedive. So you know we're as a country, as a, you know, you know, financially, when you look across what everyone's doing, I mean, debt's increasing at astronomical rates, savings rates are diving at astronomical rates. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty wild. It's getting worse uh, every single day, actually, right now. I've been following this, but I, I just had, a, I just pulled this up on Wealth Webinar this morning. Anyways, I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but we, um, but the savings rate in this country right now is just, or the uh, the debt, the recurring credit card usage is just skyrocketing right now. It's hockey stick. So it's pretty wild to see. And it's it's not getting better. And again, just the importance of this. And then, you know, it's one of those things, Craig, where not only is it, we're affecting our lives, but generationally speaking, I mean, what if, you know, you could teach your kids this concept? Yeah. You know, what if my parents had started something like this for me when I was, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 years old. And then, you know, started teaching me about it when I was 16, 18 years old, got into college. I understood money. I understood banking. I mean, what, what better position could you put yourself in and your family and your children in? And, and, you know, it's luckily I was able to learn about this when my son was, you know, still five years old and I start a policy for him. And that's exactly what my plan is. And I know Chris just started a second policy for his daughter, Vivi. So, um, it's coming out with a book, kind of talking a little bit about that soon, which is really cool. 
um, to see. So when we look at money, this is really the simplest way I can explain this, changing one thing where your money goes first. So the way money, most people spend money is they earn, let's just say a dollar. Okay, let's just say a dollar. They earn a dollar and then what happens? As soon as they earn that money, they start paying all their bills and spending it, right? So for most people, hang on one second. Um, okay, cool. Um, so for most people, like for example, uh, for every dollar that they earn, about 20 cents of that dollar, 20% of it goes towards an automobile. So whether that's payments, gas, upkeep, maintenance, whatever the case is, about 30% of every dollar earned goes to housing, which right now that's much higher actually because of the cost of housing and rent and everything right now, which also bleeds into obviously the lowered savings rates um, that we're seeing that Craig just mentioned. Uh, about 40% of every dollar goes to everything else. So just living, entertainment, food, which again, that's up right now as well, leading to the decline in savings and increase in credit card uses. I mean, grocery shopping is super expensive right now. And But generally speaking, in average times, this leaves most people at the end of the day, once all the other bills are paid and everything like that, with 10 cents of every dollar that they can put towards savings. Okay. And again, right now that 10 cents is like out the window. It's much, much, much less. And we're going into negative territory right now. So it's, it's this and, is worse. Okay. Yeah, and if you think about this particular dollar picture, you know, that everything else, the automobiles, the housing, it's just, it's squishing the, the savings number out due to what most people would call inflation. And most people think inflation is the higher cost of things, but it's really the increased money supply. And Stephen, when you were going over that banking um, example where you put the hundred thousand in, and then you know there's houses that get you know money gets loaned from the bank for houses, for cars, for debt consolidation, and we don't need to go down a rat hole on this right now. But by the fact that money went into the banking system, they took that hundred thousand dollars and magically turned it into ten times that, right? Because of the fractional reserve system. And so when people start seeing what's really going on, where the money supply keeps getting inflated, that's the reason everything's costing so much because it takes more dollars to buy the same thing. And, and that's part of one of the reasons why we teach infinite banking is so that we can get out of that craziness. We can start you know, putting our money into a, a place where it's non-inflationary. And if more and more people start doing that, the banks have less money to make more inflation. Right. So yeah. anyway, that's that's kind of a, a discussion for another day. But I mean, <laughs> that's really the reason why that savings sliver just keeps getting smaller and smaller, because people are getting squished on the fact that everything costs so much more as time yeah. goes on. A absolutely. And, and and that's the, you know, it also goes to show the importance of paying yourself first and, and making sure that, you know, again, all the stuff out of our control, we can't control inflation. We can't control who the president is. We can't control policy. We can vote. Uh, yeah, right. And so it, it's like all this stuff's out of our control. Nobody can control COVID happening and trillions of dollars spent and everything that's going on. So that's why it's so important to be able to like take care of ourselves and make ourselves important no matter what. So what we do when we're our own banks is we just do this backwards at the end of the day, right, Craig? I mean, so what we do is we take the, our money and instead of paying everything else first and then giving the rest of it into our savings account at Wells Fargo or whatever, we take our money and we put it into our own banking system first. So that's it. Remember I said, change one thing, where your money goes first. So instead of that, the way most people do things, we're taking our money, putting in our policy first. And then from there, we're going to pay off everything else or we're going to do everything else, whether that's using it from our policy or just doing things the normal way. And so what that leaves us with is that 20 cents of each dollar that now went to somebody else's bank. Well, if we're using our own banking system to provide that automobile loan, for example, because on an automobile loan, is there interest that's paid? Absolutely. Well, five cents of that 20 cents um, that goes to that automobile on average is an interest payment. And so once we create our banking system by paying ourselves first, we can buy a vehicle like we taught you last week, uh, buying Chris's Porsche. Well, now that interest that would go to somebody else's bank, where's that, ba where's that interest going to go now? It's going to go into our banking system because our banking system provided the loan to buy that automobile. Makes sense, right? So now what we just accomplished with that one little change right there is our annual savings just went from 10 cents a year to 15 cents a year. 50% increase in our annual savings just by becoming the bank. 
and using our banking system instead of somebody else's. Plain and simple. So just think to yourself, if if you have a savings um, or you have money saved up, how much better and better would you feel if that was 50% more than what you currently have and you did nothing different? You took on no more risk, right? It's as simple as that. And then we can, es, 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 uh, what's that word? Escapula? Extend? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know the word I'm trying to think of. I don't know. We can take that and we can roll that into everything else in our lives. So like even, even buying a house, you know, we mentioned that earlier. You know, what if we use our banking system to, to buy, buy a property? And that all that interest that usually goes to a bank, what if we just pay ourselves back all that interest? And again, all the money we're paying ourselves back in interest, no matter what the purchase okay. is, instead of somebody else's bank, a credit card, somebody else's bank, that's just money that goes into our savings at the end of the day. So we could do that in literally everything in our lives and increase our wealth by making that one change of where our money goes first. All right. So that's essentially, you know, the, the principles of banking and how all this works. So we kind of understand the machine now, the whole life, especially design whole life policy. We kind of understand a little bit about what we're doing with this marathon on capitalizing this whole life policy, paying ourselves first, putting the money in there. Um, and, and, and again, we're going to work with you on what that looks like for your situation when you schedule a call with one of our money mentors. So now, Craig, let's go ahead and get into a little bit about, you know, how to actually start using this in the real world uh, for, 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 uh, for real world uses. Sure. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. All right. So we always like to start off with our disclaimer anytime we're showing, you know, math or any of those types of things. So I'll go ahead and just read this real quick. All opinions expressed by Chris Noggle, any castmates, the money school or its members, employees or contractors are solely their own opinion and are not investment or personal financial advice. This content is for informational purposes only, and this information should not be relied upon for investment or other financial decisions. Nothing contained herein is financial, legal, or tax advice. You should consult with your attorneys, accountants, certified financial advisors, and other qualified professionals before contemplating to make any investment or financial decisions. So with all of that said, we have to read that. And uh, Stephen and I are, I guess, we're the castmates. <laughs> yeah, it includes Minnie Mouse, the Easter Bunny, and um, Santa Claus, and a hokey bird. Okay. Yeah, Santa Claus too. So one of the things I wanted to cover before we kind of get into some of the solution pieces, so Stephen kind of shared with you some of the reasons why infinite banking makes sense. But for those, especially for those that are new, um, have you heard of and or read the book Becoming Your Own Banker? So for those people that said they were new, maybe just put in the chat, read it or have not read it. And for those that have not read it, I would highly recommend getting this book. Now, Stephen, I think your goal this year is to read this book, right? Yeah, I think it might be <laughs> uh, with the um, with the uh, practitioner program, right? Yeah, we always pick on Stephen, but yes, he's he's read the book. So <laughs> Nelson, our Nelson Nash was really the one that codified this whole infinite banking process that we teach. Infinite banking as a as a concept has been used by the wealthy for generations, but Nelson Nash was like, hey, there's something here. And so he put together and kind of codified this process. But one of the major things he talks about is that we finance everything we buy. And, and I want this to really set in and, and maybe think about it throughout the day because we're either paying interest to someone else, that's what we would consider borrowed money, or we're giving up the ability to earn interest by paying cash. So there's an opportunity cost there. So there's no other way to do it. We're either borrowing the money or we're paying cash and we're losing the interest. Or we're losing that opportunity cost. So we need to think about, is there a better way to finance the things we need and want in life? So that that's one of the things that I want to just kind of really highlight with what we're going to be talking about next. Now, one of the things Nelson Nash talks about are the human conditions that we have to overcome in order to be successful with 
taking control of our own money. So the first thing he talked about in the human conditions is Parkinson's law. And just think about your own journey through, say, when you got your first job and then you got a raise and then maybe you got a promotion. So as our income increased, what did we do? We increased our expenses. So you get a you get a promotion at, at work and now you have a fancier car. So the fact of the matter is our our expenses are always kind of just hanging out there with our income as it increases over time. So Nelson Nash said, you know, we got to recognize that we got to, we got to, you know, beat that. Um, also a luxury once enjoyed becomes a necessity. I don't know you can think about all sorts of things. So um, let's say the first time you get into a car with air conditioning, I know most cars have air conditioning now, but I've still got a car in my garage that has hand crank windows and it doesn't have air conditioning. It's my, my, Camaro that I built in, in high school, I just can't get rid of it. <laughs> so my my air conditioning is that that window crank. Um, but yeah, I'd love to have air conditioning in it. So those are some of the things we want to think about with um, human conditions, Parkinson's law. You know, are we are we spending more than we're making? And that really gets back to that whole savings concept. He also talked about Willie Sutton's law. And if you don't know Willie Sutton, he was a, a notorious bank robber. And he was best known for uh, during one of the, someone interviewed him and they said, well, why do you rob banks? They said, well, I rob banks because that's where the money is. And I don't know that that's the case now, but that's why he robbed banks. Nelson Nash was saying this principle is that wherever wealth is accumulated, and he kind of talked about retirement accounts, 401ks, IRAs, those types of things, where wealth is accumulated, somebody will try to steal it. So how protected is your wealth from someone trying to steal it, right? So if your money's in a 401k, is it possible that the government will take more control of that over time? That's something to ponder. I don't have the absolute answer for you, but that's just something to ponder. He also talked about the golden rule, which was kind of a play on, you know, the actual biblical golden rule, which is to do unto others as you've had them do to you. But he, he kind of made fun with it and said, well, those who have the gold make the rules. And the concept behind this is, and Stephen, you shared Private Money Club, right? So Private Money Club, we've got people there that are real estate investors. They're looking for money. We have people that have money. The whole concept behind the golden uh, rule that Nelson Nash was talking about is if you have the capital, then you can go into opportunities where you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. So Stephen, on your private lending, you probably got to pick and choose who you want to work with, right? You found people that, you know, had good deals that you liked. They had the background you liked. You had the capital. So then you went and did the deal, right? So for living paycheck to paycheck, we we really don't have those opportunities. The last two, I'll just touch on the arrival syndrome. And I think a lot of people, and I've been in this myself, but, you know, we get to a certain point where we think we know everything there is to know and we we stop learning and I think even in, in terms of money and understanding how money works and, and how money flows, as soon as we think we have it all figured out, we just stop learning. And I think that's why a lot of people don't engage in infinite banking as they think they know everything about money. Um, and then the last one is, should you start infinite banking? You know, a lot of people get excited, you know, the first policy, maybe they pay down some debt. This is a lifelong, and that's why you know, Stephen pulled up, it's a marathon. It's a lifelong, it's an ongoing process where we continue to to keep building. We don't want to get lazy once we've used it once and go, okay, let, let's go back to the way we've always done things. We lose the, you know, the discipline and the vigilance. So with all those human conditions, I would just be curious if anyone in the, the chat has anything else they would put in there. Um, you know, what What are some of the things maybe holding you back? I know mindset's a huge thing. Anybody out there have anything they want to add in the chat that they would they would include on this human conditions list? Because I, I think sometimes for, for me, even in practicing this for the last, you know, 15 years, I just, you know, like tests just put in mindset. It's just like, man, the, the, the mindset sometimes has to be washed and, and rinsed out <laughs> because we we just start thinking FOMO, fear of missing out, love it, attitude, it's part of mindset. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about some of the problems, the fact that we're giving those interest payments to banks, we're, we're giving up opportunities. So there's a lot of other things that we could talk about, but as part of the solution, infinite banking and the process are part of the solution. And then bolted onto that, 
what we've been busy with here at, at uh, the BYOB and Money School uh, team is is really building tools and processes to help people understand what would be the benefit if I have debt. If I have some third party debt, I've got you know credit cards, I've got lines of credit, I've I've got all these other things that I'm I'm just con- continually paying money out uh, for third party debts. Is there a better way? So we've got a tool called Debt Blaster, and I'll get into more of that. But how can we structure a process where we can take back some of that interest that we're paying out to Amex and Visa and whoever else? The other thing is there may be some folks out here in the audience who don't have any debt. I don't have any third party debt. Maybe you've got a mortgage, but you're you're at a point where you've you've got some cash. You want to be able to do some investing. We don't actually tell you what you should invest in or or what those rates are. But if you were to come to us and say, hey, I'm doing private lending, I'm making 12 to 15%. I'd like to run some money through a policy and see what that would look like. We have a tool called Gain Projector that can help visualize how that money is going to flow, even with the loan repayments. So that is another tool we have. And then, you know, we deal with a lot of folks that, you know, everyone drives cars, Everybody, you know, Sean on our team, she does a, a trip to Disney every year. That's a major purchase for her. So she runs it through her policies. I worked on a case yesterday with with a, a client where he's trying to figure out how to kind of flow his money through a system for college planning. So those are all major purchase type uh, situations where we can kind of show you how the infinite banking system is going to work with major purchases. So with all that said, those are some of the things that we have in our our back pocket that will help you understand your specific situation. Now, Stephen, I see you just posted the the, the uh, mentors link. Can you kind of explain what would happen if someone were to book a call? What's going to happen, you know, on that call if someone for the first time you know, hooks up with one of our mentors. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then I want to get into a little bit of showing, showing, uh, you know, how this concept works with doing what we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, so we'll show anybody if, if you do have some debt, stay tuned here. We'll get into that and uh, show you how we can start using this for some investing with the uh, game projector and, and go from there. But yeah, I, I posted a link to schedule a call with one of our money mentors. You know, first off, you know, we have a handful of money mentors that are all very experienced. They've been doing this for a long time. And they're all very well trained by uh, Nelson Nash Institute, by Chris Noggle and Brent Kessler, myself, Craig, um, and our team. And and they're very good at consulting. Okay, they're they're consult con- consultants more more so than anything else. We've actually instructed our team never to sell. Um, so you're never going to be sold. You're never going to be pushed to do anything. Uh, we're just going to strategize with you. You know, hey. What, what's your situation look like today? You know, do you have debts? Are you looking to invest? Are you looking to grow wealth? Um, you know, what do you, what, what, what position are you in now? You know, what does your life look like? You know, how old are you? What's your income? What's your job? What, you know, what's your family look like? And we're going to, we're going to spend um, on the first call, we're going to spend about an hour with you and it's going to be a zoom call. So it's going to be on video. Uh, we want you to get to know your money mentor. We want to work with you, you know, not one time on one call. We want to work with you for the rest of your life because, you know, one thing I've learned by doing this now for several years is that when somebody starts their first policy and starts doing infinite banking, they are going to come back and want to do more because it's, you know, it's like riding a bike where once you learn how to ride a bike, you never forget how to ride a bike. And uh, you know, we show this example of what we call a backwards bike uh, video. There's there's a video on YouTube called the backwards bicycle. Uh, go Google it if you get a chance after this webinar or go YouTube it, the backwards bicycle. And it, it shows how when you take a bicycle and you change one thing on that bicycle, which is how the handlebars operate. So basically reverse the handlebars on the bicycle. And then you get on that bicycle that you've been able to ride your entire lifetime. You reverse those handlebars. Guess what happens? you no longer can ride that thing. And it gets into the reasons why in your mind and your brain and how your brain operates and and why you're not able to do that and why you, you can't, you know, your brain doesn't allow you to think a new way. Well, that's infinite banking. It takes a lot to fully grasp this concept and, and have that mindset shift. But then once that happens, there's no going back. 
Like you're going to be in it for life. So we want to start right from the very first experience, whether it's on this wealth webinar today with Craig and I, or whether it's on that first strategy call with your money mentor, we want to be with you. Now, obviously this day and age, we, we, you know, it's not, it's not possible for, us to fly on airplanes to go meet with you in your living room. So the beautiful thing about living in 2024 is we have Zoom and Google Meets and these different ways of doing video. I mean, if you have a phone, you can do this stuff. And so it's really cool. Um, now, you don't have to do a video call if you prefer a phone call. No problem. But I'm just explaining kind of what this looks like. So we'll do a call with you. We'll spend 60 minutes on the first one, getting to know you, your situation, start talking about your strategy, start talking about you know how much might be right for you to put into this policy, um, you know, because you are making premium payments, uh, whether it's monthly, quarterly, biannually, once a year annually, um, you are going to be putting money into this policy. So we strategize with you what that looks like for your situation. And then we start figuring out, okay, what is your money problem? Is it debt? What are your goals? Is it growing wealth? Is it creating a legacy? And then on that call, by figuring out your situation and where you are today, we start solving your money problem. And we start putting together a step-by-step -step plan for you to follow. And so on that call, if you're comfortable on that first call, what we're going to do is we're going to start a policy, um, start designing a policy for you. Now, keep in mind on that first call, there's no commitment. Um, even if you decide, hey, this plan looks good. Let's keep moving forward. Um, you know, for it, there, there's still, you know, you're not like saying, you know what, I'm in for the rest of my life yet. Okay. Uh, and so the, there's lots of, so, so it's, it's very easy. I'm just trying to, to get across here. Not a big deal at all. And so what we'll do is we'll create this design. We'll create this plan for you, this specially designed policy. And then not only that though, but then we'll also create the actual plan of how you're going to use that policy. And we're going to show you that during this process of getting started, because this is a whole life insurance policy, there is medical underwriting. And so to get approved for one of these policies before you even have the ability to start it usually takes a couple weeks to a couple months. Um, so there's a lot of time in between there that we can continue to work with you and develop your plan. So that way, as soon as you are approved and you say, okay, I love it. I'm in, let's go. You make your first premium payment. That policy goes in force. You're ready within a day or two to request your first loan and use that policy for whatever your your goals or your, your problems are because you already have the plan in place and because our team is sitting there holding your hand every step along the way to do all of this. And then every month, every few months, as often as you need moving into the future, our team is right there to meet with you, go over your plan, revise it, see what has changed in your life and be right there to help you uh, for the rest of your life. And just so you guys know, this initial call, designing this policy, creating the plan, working with you every year for the rest of your life, um, it's free. We don't charge anything for any of that, okay? So you'll never pay Craig, myself, any of us a dime. Um, we do get paid, obviously, but we get paid from the insurance company, just like any other insurance agent out there. We do make a re reduced commission. I hit on this a couple of weeks ago. Because of the special design of the policy, we give so you can get, we give up commissions that we typically would get as insurance agents. So you have more access to your money immediately. So you can implement and start using your plan starting from day one. You don't have to wait years down the road to start using this plan. Um, so we give so you can get, and at the end of the day, uh, that's what it's all about. So that's what that call is that I posted. So if you want to have a strategy call, chat with one of our team, uh, one of our money mentors, um, go ahead and get that scheduled at a convenient time for yourself. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. Because I, I think it helps kind of set the table for what people should expect when they book a call on that link. It's just really, we're going to understand from a strategy call, what you're trying to accomplish. We're going to gather some information. We're going to understand what your end goal is. And then we'll, we'll start putting that, that solution together along with you. Once that solution's put in place, we have, you know, ongoing support. So it's, it's really cool. Um, I would like to know just on the on the attendees, how many folks do we have on today that have some sort of third party debts that they would like to learn how to efficiently pay down? Um, you know, whether it's credit card, line of credits. I'm not talking about mortgages per se, but 
Do we have anybody on today? And if you just put I, you don't need a lot of details. I'm just curious if we have some folks that are going to be interested in this next section or if I just skim over it. So we've got a few. Okay. All right. So what, what we were talking about is assuming you were to book a call. So all the folks here, um, you know, Deborah, Michael, David, RG, you know, if you were to book with one of our mentors and we're having a, a discussion about debt, you know, one of the things that we're going to be looking at, let me just pop this report open, is we're going to really investigate what does your debt profile look like. And so, for example, this is a this is a you know set of debts that a client might have. Let's say you've got a Wells Fargo credit card with twelve thousand dollars remaining, you know, interest rates at twenty nine point nine percent, and you're actually paying say five hundred and fifty dollars a month towards that debt. So our first order of business is really just to go through and understand what are those debts, what are the balances, what are the interest rates, what are you paying towards that debt, and is it a minimum payment, is it you know maximum payment? And so really at the end of that exercise, we'll have kind of your total debts, we'll understand how much is going towards those debt payments. And, and then we're also going to investigate kind of what's the rest of your situation look like, what's your cash flow, what's your income, expenses, and and so a lot of that's going to drive what we have available to use for funding a policy that we'll, we'll use to help accelerate this debt pay down. So step one is just identifying, putting a profile together of what your specific debts look like. Now, for, for the people out there that have debts, I'm sure you've heard of the snowball. And that's a methodology where you know, you're paying those debts down in an order right? So if I look at these debts, actually, before I go to the snowball, let me just let me just talk about how most people pay debts off. Let's say that this is my debt profile, and I'm paying $550 towards my Wells Fargo card. Most cases, when people pay off debt, let's say that Wells Fargo card is now fully paid off, but I've still got my truck and I've still got my student loans, all these other things. I'm going to take that $550 and I'm just going to add it to my daily expenses. I'm going to start going out to you know dinners. Maybe I buy some new clothes. So we're going to start spending that money that's going to go into our pool of expenses, if you will. And that's how most people pay debts. They pay the debt off and then go blow the money. Now, what we're talking about with Snowball and some of these, what I call sequential ways of paying off debt is to say, when I pay off my Wells Fargo card, I'm going to take that $550 and I'm going to add it to my American Express payment. So now I'll be paying $950 to my Amex card until it's paid off. Once that's paid off, I'm going to take the 550 from the Wells Fargo, the 400 from the Amex, I'm going to put it on top of the truck payment of 412. So hopefully everyone gets kind of the scheme there. Now the, the idea is you're just going to keep adding to your payments and you're going to pay it off a lot faster. There's different methodologies out there. There's the snowball, which is lowest balance to highest balance. So that's how you would structure your debts. And some people say that's always the best way to go right? That always do the snowball. It's the best way to go. Dave Ramsey talks about that quite often. There's another one out there called the cash flow index. And essentially what it's doing is it's looking at the ratio of your balance to your payments, and it's coming up with a, an efficiency score, if you will. So of course, the higher the payment is in relation to the balance, the more efficient the debt is. You'll pay it off faster. So that methodology says you should pay off your least efficient debts first and get those out of the way. Um, there's another methodology out there called the avalanche, and the avalanche says you should look at the highest interest rate to the lowest interest rate. Now, here's the thing. I don't care if the snowball is the most efficient or if the cash flow index or the avalanche is more efficient. What we want this tool to do is we want us to tell us what is the most efficient. I don't care which one is, but just tell me which one is, because that's going to be the least amount of interest going out of the door and it's going to pay it off the fastest. So do you all agree that we don't really care what whether snowball, avalanche, or cash flow index is just wouldn't you want to know what's the most efficient order? I mean, Stephen, wouldn't you want to know? I mean, that's that's how I that's how my mind works anyway. Oh, absolutely. So so think about this. After we've identified your debts, we put them into the proper order. In this case, it's using the avalanche. See how it's going highest interest rate to lowest. That happened to be the most efficient for this particular person's situation. 
in some cases it is the the um, snowball in some cases it's the cash flow index however now what we want to do is after that discussion with the money mentor and we know kind of what your policy design looks like we're going to um, design a policy for you and we're going to use that policy in the debt pay down structure now before I get into that piece of it, I just kind of want to show those three options I just shared with you. Option one, what the tool is saying is if you continue to pay debts off the same way they've always been paid off, which is to pay them and then just go blow the money. For this debt profile, it's going to take 336 months. There will be $164,000 paid in total. And of that, 65000 of that is interest. So remember, the total debt balance on this is about 99000 But if you just continue to do it the same way everyone does it, it's going to be about $164,000 uh, just, to, just to pay off that debt. So one of the benefits when we go through this debt profile, a lot of people look at that and go, wow, I had no idea it's going to take me that long and that much money is leaving my family forever. So that's option one. Most people don't like option one. Option two is, the tool figures out, okay, if I'm using the avalanche to pay down my debts, I'm going to pay them off in 56 months. I now have 119,000 of total payments and 20,000 is what I'm paying in interest. So option two is much better. I'm sure everybody would go, well, I'll take option two over option one, but it does take that discipline of using the previous debts payment and just stacking them on top of each other. Now, what we do here with infinite banking is we say if, if you're already putting some savings into a bank account or you're maybe storing it in a 401k or whatever it might be, what if you were to take some of that savings and start funding and capitalizing your policy and then letting it compound and grow? Because here's the magic of it, folks. When you put money into the system, it will compound and grow regardless of whether you're leveraging it or not. So that's a pretty big, uh, a pretty big feature of of this whole infinite banking system. I'll repeat that: when you capitalize and put money into the system, you can then borrow, and that money that you put into the policy still continues to compound and grow. So we've now put our money into you know two places, you know, working, if you will. So let's say that we've decided to avalanche our debts, and we're going to run some of our savings through the infinite banking system and then use that money to pay down the debt. So we're going to put that on top of our existing debt payments. Well, now you're going to pay all those third-party debts off in 35 months. That means you've taken all those debts and you've moved them into the policy where you now have control and you can recapture some of the interest payments. However, we want to be an honest banker. So if you read Nelson Nash's book, he talks about being an honest banker. We want to pay back the system just the same amount we would have paid uh, the Visa and MasterCard and Wells Fargo. So for the next 17 months, you're going to take all those debt payments and put them back into your system. So your total debt pay down uh, timeline is 52 months using infinite banking and the avalanche. Okay, so 56 months here, 52 months here. But this is where it gets exciting because now we've we've actually out of pocket to do this system. We've paid $9,526 of interest versus 20 in option two versus 65,000 in option one. So we've captured a lot of that interest and put it into our own system. So at the end of this pay down, we've got almost 50,000 of cash value and we've got a death benefit of 340,000. So this is the math behind the process. So for those of you that have debt, if this is interesting and you want to explore this, then I would say definitely book with our one of our mentors. We'll be able to do this process for you, design your policy, gather your debts, and and figure out what this how this is going to turn out for you. So that's the that's the debt blaster. Um, when you get into the implementation phase. More or less, what it kind of looks like is you you will build out a schedule. And so month by month, we'll know how much money is coming out of the policy. And as you pay down debts, we'll know how much extra we have to throw at the next debt. But in this particular policy design, we're able to fund it and immediately take out about $15,000 and wipe out the, the Wells Fargo card, the Amex card. And then as we take those payments, and add them onto the truck, you know, we'll, we'll see how long will it take us to pay down the truck, then our 
our personal loan, then our student loan. And so it just kind of gives you a play by play month by month of what's the balance. What do we have left? Um, and, and this becomes important. So if let's say, for example, you got a bonus at work, you're like, what do I do with this $2,000? We can have a discussion. Does it make sense to throw it at one of those debts and accelerate this whole program? But that's essentially what we're what we're offering in terms of of helping you with your debt paydowns. Any questions? So, Stephen, I don't know if there were any questions in the Q and A, but uh, we're good in the Q and A. Comments. Chris just said I would think the easiest way to go would be paying off the smaller balances first and work your way up to the bigger balances. Just a personal opinion. Yeah, and and Chris. You know, really, it comes down to I just let the math figure out the the deal. So, the tool will actually schedule it and say, okay, if I do pay off from smaller to larger, heart, you know, larger to smaller. I mean, it just looks at all of those and it figures out what's the the fastest and most efficient way. Now, in some cases, the math would say do it this way, but let's say you've got a personal loan with your brother in law. Let's say Stephen's your brother in law, and you have Thanksgiving dinner. Stephen shows up at Thanksgiving dinner. He's like, hey, Chris, you know that money you owe me? And he says it right in front of everybody. He's like, I, I need my money back. You know, And he starts giving you pressure. Well, maybe Stephen's interest rate is lower than maybe your Wells Fargo card, but the stress that Stephen causes you by you know, threatening you and maybe he's going to bust your kneecaps if, if you don't pay your, your debt off, maybe you want that to be your first debt you pay off. It may not make mathematical sense, but that might be the most logical one to pay off just emotionally. Um, so the good news is we can structure those orders however you want. And, and if you want to test, you know, kind of a different methodology, we can be very specific about, well, let's pay this one down and see how, how it plays out. So nothing set in stone there. All right. So that's the debt. And we're not going to, you know, get into great detail, but just kind of introducing those. Uh, so for those of you that do have debt, I would suggest taking a look at that, you know, for your specific situation. We have another tool called the major purchase, and I'm going to go ahead and blow this up a little bit. So with a major purchase, think of it this way. Let's say we're going to buy a car. Maybe we've capitalized. And, and if you look at the middle portion of this, of this screen, this is essentially your policy performance with, uh, you know, assuming the dividends are paid and they paid them, you know, for 120 years consistently. Typically, what we're going to do is give you this report and you're going to get the illustration from the insurance company. That's the full document showing all the policy, you know, design, all the considerations. But what we're showing here is this particular policy, there was $32,000 put in year one. And then after that, 6,000 after, you know, up to year 10. And then after that, it was about 3375 However, in this policy situation, there was some capitalization for the first four or five years, looks like four years. And so they had built up to about $46,000 that's available as a loan. Now it's time to go buy a car. So now they're going to take $25,000 out of their policy to go purchase a car. And they're going to structure a loan repayment of $6,000 a year. Why $6,000 a year? Well, that's what the dealership would have would have charged them. So they're going to pay the exact same amount that the dealership would have charged back into their own system. And one of the cool things about that is the the loan interest charge inside of the policy is actually less than what the dealer would charge. So you're going to pay that that loan back and still have money to put into the system to the tune of almost two thousand dollars. That's what this 1956 is. You essentially pay off the, the loan, recapture your money back into your system, pay a little bit to the uh, to the insurance company. So this loan interest cost down here, that $1,208, 48 the 591 that's actually loan interest that would be going to the insurance company. So there's a cost uh, inside that, but you, you now have $2,000 more than what it costs to pay that ins the insurance company back. That money is yours. It can go into premium. It can go into the compounding machine. So after that car is paid off, then in year nine, they're like, hey, I want to buy a $50,000 car. So the $25,000 car goes to the kids. They go buy a new $50,000 car and then finance that for the next five, five, six years. So the whole purpose of this major purchase tool is just to help you understand how does the money flow? 
How does it work to pay back my loans? And again, we have an implementation team that can help kind of wire that all up for you. But we're we're just kind of showing up at the top here, kind of the loan analysis. So if you take a loan for 25,000 and you pay it down and then you overpay your loan, that's what the green is. So we, we put in almost $2,000 more towards a loan than we, that would have gone to say a, a finance company, a bank or a dealership. And then what's it look like when we buy the next car and then pay it down. So there's, there's some different perspectives here, but whether you're doing uh, say a college funding, you're going on vacation, it's anything that's kind of a major purchase. We can kind of help you see the benefit of that. And what I wanted to do in light of that is just kind of share with you a conversation I had, and I've done a few of these recently on just college. If you have children soon going to college or maybe already in college, um, in this case, this person's college expenses were about $40,000 a year. And they were just paying for that out of pocket. So what we did in our strategy calls, I learned that they've got about $7,700 that they've been kind of setting aside. Some of that's for college, some of it's savings. And so what we did is we initially funded this, this policy with about $55,000 of cash they had laying around. And then they plan to put an additional $50,000 in. So $105,000 goes in day one. So they've got the policy capitalized immediately and they can start taking money out you know, the 40,000 yearly loan for the college goes into a, a segregated account, which then is used to pay for the college. Now that 7,700 that they were putting into a savings account and, you know, keeping for emergency fund and paying for the college, all we're doing is we're taking that same amount of money and we're using 42,000 of it to repay the policy loan. So it refills the bucket so they can use it again. And then that 50,000 is going into the premium, which compounds and grows over time. So there's really two things going on here. They wanted to be able to pay off some um, investment real estate in about, you know, after the college was paid off in about five years, they want to take that bulk and just pay off their, their real estate. So we were using the policy to capitalize and store money so that they could pay that real estate off after their child is out of college in four years. Anyway, this is the way the money's flowing. So they're not really putting anything else new into it other than that initial funding of that 105. And then they just continue to use the same amount of money that they were storing in a savings account. We're just putting it somewhere else. So remember how Steven said, we're just changing one thing where our money goes. Well, that's what we're doing. We're taking it out of the savings account. We're putting it in the policy. So essentially what happens is, I know there's a lot of numbers here, but I'm just going to draw your attention to, this is the funding, the 105,000 goes in, and I'll just put in slideshow, make it a little bigger. So the 105,000 is going in year one, and they've got access to 83,000, but they only need 40. And then what they're doing is paying back, I think it's about $3,500 a month, which is going to cover the loan, uh, refill the loan bucket. But what, what was as exciting is after the fifth year, College is paid off, and now they've got 241000 that he plans to use to, to kind of wipe out the, the remaining balance on his real estate, and, and then he'll have that cash flowing, and he'll run that back into the policy to recapture and pay for. So this is kind of a, a two-stepper where he's got a major purchase with his college, and then step two is going to be use the cash value again to pay off his real estate, recapture that, and build it up again, and then you know, about age 60 or so, he'll have close to $500,000 of cash value that he could use for retirement. So he could start pulling some money out of the policy for retirement funds, or maybe that's just kind of an emergency fund for retirement. So anyway, just wanted to share that as a kind of a multi-step, multi-purchase uh, or major purchase strategy. All right. Gain projector. It's the last one we'll cover. It's not the only thing we can, you know, these are not the only tools that we have available, but these are the three primaries. Who here is interested in investing with their policy? Do we have any people on that are wanting to know, does it make sense to run money through my policy for investing, whether that's private lending, whether that's additional real estate? Okay. So we've got some folks that are interested in that. All right. So here's here's what the gain projector is all about. The question is if I build a policy with and run my money that I want to invest in say a private lending deal, I'll just use that as an example. What would it look like if I fund the policy, pull out the maximum loan, put it into that that specific deal 
and then, then just keep running the money through the system. So as a visual, what I want to show you is this is kind of how the money is going to flow through the infinite banking, and it's going to be highlighted with the gain projector. So let's assume you've been putting money into, you've been putting premium deposits into your policy. You're going to take a loan that could be some or all of it, and that loan is going to end up in a segregated account. Let's just say that you are someone who does private, uh, you're a member of the private money club and you're you're funding a deal through private money club. So what we'll do is we'll take those proceeds from the loan and we'll loan it out to someone that we're working with in the private money club. And let's just say they're paying us 12 or 15%, whatever it might be. Every month, let's say we take 100,000, we put it in there at 12%. So every month we're going to get $1,000. So that $1,000 of interest is going to go back into the segregated account. There's a lot of different ways we could structure this. Maybe you want all of it going back into the loan. Maybe you want none of it going back into the loan and you just want to keep reinvesting. But the example I'm going to show you today, what we're doing is we're taking that 100000 whatever the number is, goes into Private Money Club. We're taking the $1,000 a month of interest and we're going to keep putting it back out to work, but we're going to keep just enough to pay the policy loan interest. So we're not going to let the policy loan interest compound on us. We're going to pay that off every year. We're going to take the rest of our gain and put it back into the private money club deal. So our, our capital that we have invested is going to keep going up every year. We're not going to pay off our loan capital, but we are going to pay off our loan interest. So Hopefully that makes sense. That's kind of the flow of the money. So new money goes into the policy. A loan comes out of the policy, goes into a segregated account. We're going to take that money invested in a deal. We're going to get the proceeds from that deal, pay our loan interest and put the rest back out to work. Now you might decide to wire that up a little bit differently, but that's essentially the, the way this is going to flow today. If there's any questions on that, now is a good time to throw them in the Q&A. If not, I'm going to continue on. Hopefully that all made sense. Yeah, and I'll put a link over in the box. If anybody wants to learn more about Private Money Club and some of the education available through PMC and what it can do, uh, whether you're on the borrower or lender side, just put a link over there to schedule a call with our um, success team. Yeah. So the gain projector on the bottom section of the report, it's got a lot of detail, but just keep in your mind this flow of money, okay? Because what I'm going to be showing you is what, Cumulatively, what have you put into the system? And cumulatively, what is your net benefit? And when I talk about net benefit, that's going to be essentially looking at what you've put in, what your gains are, minus your cost of loan interest. So if you walked away from the deal, what would you be walking away with in comparison to what you put in? So that's what the gain projector is really helping you with in, in terms of understanding. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that report up. So with the gain projector, you know, one of the things we need to identify is how much funding is going to go into the policy. So in this middle section, and I'll blow this up a little bit more, this is really just the, a recap of kind of how your policy is performing. And again, this is going to happen regardless of whether you're leveraging the money or not. This is how the policy is going to grow over time, you know, whether you just fund it and put it, put it on the shelf. So what's happening here is there's a $50,000 dump in, which means we're just taking $50,000, dropping it into the policy, and then we're adding $10,000 of ongoing premium. So that's why you see 60,000 in year one. Year two, we're putting in 10,000. Year three, we're putting in 10,000. And so that, that's kind of the motion of what's happening here. Now there's going to be a certain amount of that available in year one. And this is, this is something really important to understand is when you put a dollar into the policy in year one or two, you're typically not getting all of that money accessible because of the cost of insurance. So you've got about one and a half million dollars of death benefit here. So that's why you're not getting every dollar back. This is a marathon. This is a long-term thinking. And if we've got some time, I can kind of share with you a little more detail, but um, essentially it's going to take a little while for this flywheel to spin up which means when we start looking at this projected cash on cash, what's happening in this measurement is when I put a dollar into the policy in year three, so I put in $10,000, my policy grew by 10,433, which means I'm now on a year by year basis because of the previous year's compounding, 
I am now getting more out that year than I put in. So this is one of our efficiency measurements. So I'm in year three for every dollar I put into the into the system, I've got a dollar four to use. All right. So every year we're going to get more and more access to money that we're going to put into our investment. So now what we do is we go down to the details in the gain projector. And the way this is structured is it looks at year one, year two, year three. So it's going to be a 15 year projection, making assumptions of your investment returns. And, and you know, so that's kind of up to you if you think 12% or if you think 8%, whatever that's going to be. In this case, I use 12%. So what I'm doing is in this section, it's really just showing kind of the operation of the policy. We put in 50,000 dump, we put in 10,000 of uh, premiums, we take out 50,000 and we're going to put that into an investment that's going to come along with about a $2,500 uh, loan cost. So essentially what we do is at the bottom of this um, snapshot is we're looking at how much working capital do you have? So you've got about 50,000. At 12%, that 50,000 generated about $6,000 of gain. Because we can't take every dollar out of the policy, there's going to be a fragment or a remnant of, of cash value. And, and in year one, that's about 5,500. And then what I'm going to do in this case, remember in that diagram I showed, I'm going to take the loan interest out of the gain that I made. So I'm going to take 2,500 out of that 6,000 and pay off the loan, loan interest and then put the rest to work. So at the end of year one, we've injected about 60,000 into the, into the system and we have 59,000. So we have a little bit less than what we put in. So we've got net net about a, you know, negative 1.52% is our cumulative return for that year. However, we also have $1.5 million of death benefits. So this is why I'm saying if you have kind of a longer term mentality, this is a great system. But if you're looking at that and going, well, I could have made a better return year one, True. But even doing a cash only investment where typically the policy is typically going to do better, say year seven, eight, nine, or 10, somewhere along that point, it's going to catch up and pass it. So anyway, the benefit of looking at this is year over year, how am I doing? So in year two, we now have a net benefit of 72,000 on 70,000 injection. You know, so if we jump over here to year 15, in year 15, we've put in $160,000, but we have 474,000 and a death benefit of 500,000. So it, it kind of shows you what, what life looks like year over year. And you may, you may decide at some, at some point, let's say at, uh, let's say year 10, which is this column at year 10, you're generating about $28,000 of, of gain. You've got some loan interest to pay, but you may decide, you know what, at this point, I don't want to reinvest anymore. Or maybe you want to just pay the loans off in the policy and not do the investment anymore. So that's the flexibility of the tools. We can kind of wire this up however you want to, to kind of run with it. So anyway, I know that's a lot of detail, but just want to kind of introduce you to the concept and, and just kind of taking you back, just think about how the money's flowing. And really what I'm showing at the very bottom of that screen is kind of the what you're putting in and what are you getting out as a net benefit. That's really the, the whole goal of, of the gain projector. So with all of that said, Really, the next steps are if you've got a major purchase with a college, vacations, cars, we can help you kind of, you know, uh, plan out your particular situation. If you've got third party debt, let's put a plan together to figure out how to, you know, knock that debt out and be more efficient with that recapture. Or if you're on the investment side, let's uh, let's uh, talk about how to to run the money through the policy. So you've got that uninterrupted compounding, you've got your money working in multiple places, plus you have that death benefit coming along for the ride. Uh, so those are those are kind of the three main use cases we can help you with. All right, cool, Stephen, man. any other comments? Very nicely, nicely done, Craig. I, I love to, uh, to see it, love to see it. We talk about it a lot, love to actually see it. So um, thank you for that, really appreciate it. Thanks everybody for being on today. Uh, I put the link one more time, just uh, really easy schedule a call at your convenience. We'll spend a few minutes with you talking through what that looks like and see if we can help uh, your situation in any way. If so, great. Um, if not, no worries. We'll be right back here next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern for Wealth Webinar with a whole new uh, strategy, a whole new financial concept. And we'll continue teaching you how to take back control and solve your money problem 
on a weekly and daily basis. Uh, come back at 4.30 if you have any other questions on the YouTube channel, at the Chris Noggle or on social media. We'll be streaming Ask Me Anything Happy Hour from 4.30 to 5.30 Eastern today and every single Wednesday. And other than that, hope everyone has a great week, great day, and we'll see you soon. Stay safe. All right. right Thanks, all. Thanks, Craig. See you guys. Bye. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. We're putting up tons of them. But I think if you like this one, you'll probably like that video as well. Not only that, I've got a book that I created, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, where we actually show you what the wealthy do in the game they play with money. I want you to have that for free. And if you want to know about all my new videos coming up, click that alert button. Actually, smash that alert button, and you'll be notified every time we put a new video. So we'll see you on the next episode.